I uh, just want to introduce the next presenter now, which is Tim Fox, Inspector of Finance in New South Wales. Uh, Tim joined Fire Brigade in 1985, spent the majority of his career working as a specialist rescue operator, including five years senior rescue instructor. And Tim's involved with Road Rescue Challenge started in 1995 and the Lindus member of the Burwood team. Won the state and went to represent the challenge, uh, brigade of the challenge in Canada. Uh, Tim remains specially involved with the area challenges and continues to be involved with the area because he knows how much his on-road skills improve for training and for participating in national and international events. Tim was promoted to inspector in 2006 and has worked for two years in regional New South Wales based at Bathurst and has returned to Sydney and is a relieving inspector based at Asheville. I'd just like you to welcome Tim up and Tim will try to get this video running as soon as possible. Through the connections with Arrow um, and doing the preparation work with Steve for this symposium, uh, I was invited down to do some training in the train lift rescue uh, with the Tasmanian Fire Service. One of the things that I would like to emphasise to all of you is that if you have trains in your area, if, you, if there is any chance that you will respond to trains, you should run a train lift um, rescue package in your area. The most difficult thing in arranging practical training at a rail yard is getting on with your local rail service, getting their cooperation. It's the thing that takes the most effort. If you can do that and then maintain that training using the equipment, the standard equipment that you have on all rescue vehicles, you will be able to affect these standard lifts. What, uh, we're going to give you a, a, a quick run through of them. Uh, this is video footage from the training sessions that we run here with TASFIRE. The, you will be getting to do all of these lifts in a 20 minute rotation down at the Rail Museum. So those who are prepared to put their hand up and get in first will get the most hands-on experience. This will set the scene and let you know what it is that's ahead of your run. You know, one of the things that you have to do, if you're going to lift a wheel of a, uh, of a carriage off the ground, off the track, the opposite wheel, the wheel on the opposite side of the track has a possibility of falling in between the two wheels, uh, in between the two tracks. You have, if you're going to do that, you have to have some sort of system in mind to ensure that the wheel that is supposed to stay on the rail does stay there. One of the things that we practice with the uh, TAS Fire guys is using a, uh, a chain pull set or a turf of winch uh, around the bogey to pull the wheel hard up against the track. It will be explained to you. through the idea is you will set up you'll set up some sort of winching system, some sort of system to stop the uh, wheel falling off the track. Um, we, we then used just the standard jacks, a, uh, a, a 10 ton uh, bottle jack, a 10 ton single acting ram will lift a passenger carriage, a 20 ton ram will lift a loco. This was fully laden loco with fuel in it with a 25 ton ram. So, so the standard list that we have, this is a standard wheel lift and there are plenty of ways that you can come in with follow-up packing. We will have a look at all of those when we get down to the road. Now. lift where you can you lift uh, both wheels on the same axle up off the ground. If you do that, it saves a little bit of time because you don't have to uh, do any chaining of the bogey. You don't have to prevent the wheel from coming off the ground. The 
only works if you are on uh, flat ground. So if where the tracks curve around and they have camber you know, to make a smoother ride right around the track, they won't be level. If you do an axle lift where there is camber on the rail, rail line, uh, they will fall over sideways. Um, if any of you have done train lift training in the past, you will know that if a train does, if any of your um, pattern, if any of your lifting equipment does slip, when the train moves, it moves very quickly, it makes a very loud noise when it hits the ground. And uh, all of the people who are working count their fingers and toes. And I've luckily never had an injury, but I've certainly had a few uh, incidents where the packing has slipped. One of the other things that we use quite a bit are the airbags. Airbags do a very good, effective job uh, at, at 50. A uh, 20 tonne airbag that you have here, easily able to lift this uh, carriage. <coughs> and then the last thing that we did, so you did a, a single wheel and axle lift, a bogey lift that you just saw. This one here is a, uh, a carriage or a Wagon lift. Uh, they're all packed, they're all freight wagons here, so it's a wagon lift. We do this in case you have a patient who gets hit by a train and is thrown up and squashed between the top of the bogey and the wagon itself. Uh, and you think, how could that happen? Until Purse, Steve Purcell told me about the incident that they had with a patient being dragged for 50 metres and ended up wedged between the wheel and the I wouldn't have thought that that was possible. And for them to do that and for the person still to be alive when we got there. So it is possible, it is feasible that you have a patient up wedged on top of the bogey and between and the uh, underside of the carriage. And what you have to do is lift them up enough for the ambulance officers to be able to effect a release. And we will be doing that and showing you the, what you need to do to achieve that lift down at the rail yard at the museum. Okay. When you do that, you achieve, you're able to lift the entire bogey with a good shot of it there, with the kingpin exposed showing how much space you'd be able to achieve to get a patient out. As they did in the, the rescue that Steve was telling you about, they only needed to move, release the brakes, which created about a 10 millimetre gap. And that additional 10 millimetres is what was able to get their patient out. Uh, in training, we always try for approximately a 100 millimetre lift. If you can lift them 100 mil in training, you should be able to get them out. that we recommended that they use. Uh, the, the best thing that we have found uh, for lifting these 20, 25, 30 ton, 50 ton rams is an air operated uh, hydraulic pump, an air turbo pump. You get fantastic control in both the uh, extension of the ram and fantastic 
fantastic control with the release of Iran. And again, any of those who are prepared to stick their hand up and jump in and operate the tools, we'll get to see how good these uh, devices are. We'll be using both hand pumps and the air operated hydraulic pumps uh, down at the rail yard. That's a quick overview of what you're going to do. The reason we thought it would be beneficial to show you that is because we've got quite a few people, large groups, and that you've got a 20 minute, a very quick rotation down at the rail yard. But again, what I want you to do is get a taste of the uh, lift rescue training that, uh, that we did with the guys from Hazra, uh, from Tasfire, and take these back and start doing your own training yourselves. If there's any chance that you will respond to a rail incident, it is imperative that you do this training. Okay. I'm sure that there will be more questions that we'll be able to answer down at the rail yard, but does anyone have any questions that I'd like to answer? Okay. I'm sure that there will be many, many questions generated down there, and I am sure that it will be a very, very good training session uh, for the two groups. Tim, that's just a bit of an insight. So, so as Tim mentioned, there'll be a range of regular activity. You'll be in your groups, good chance to get hands on and experience this. And you'll uh, have a wealth of um, experience in a large group and the instructing group to assist with you uh, in this, this in, in, with this endeavour for the practical. Uh, so it's like a classical full solar equipment. Uh, just a recognition for uh, your support with us uh, Tim. Uh, from the organising committee.